House Lannister. Welcome to the Texas Bucket List, the show dedicated to everything there is to see, do, and experience right here in the Lone Star State. If you can't tell already, we really like the 80s. And over in Houston, we found a fantastic stop that features some really old games and fine whiskey, making it a bodacious stop on the Texas Bucket List. From beer, burgers, baseball, to a big below ground basin, we've got a big old list of things to do in the Bayou City. And now, that includes an incredible place to play a few games. As you'll see stuff here you either have not seen before or that you want to see again. Charles Callis opened this unique game room at the gates of Minute Maid Park back in 2003. But it's not really an arcade that anybody can come to at any point of the day. It's more like a showroom that folks can rent out for the most incredible birthday party a guy my age could imagine. We turn everything on and then you have your own instant game room for yourself. My 40th birthday was eight days ago, man. I met you a week too late. You see, now we were taking care of you. Attached to his 1820 bar, the game room is a great place to get some drinks. And if you happen to go on the first and last Friday of the month, you might get a chance to sneak in to see the assortment of games. But if you're in the market for a machine, Charles is your guy. How often do you sell these machines? Do you sell one a day, two a day? Well, we don't sell enough of them, let's put it that way. Oh, I was about to say. <laughs> Buy them and take them home tonight. There we go. We're getting something new for the office. Exactly. <laughs> so how did you get into arcade machines? I lost a bet. So Let me guess, there's a flip of a quarter. That's, <laughs> that's right. His passion for playing games while getting paid all started at the age of 14 when Charles saved up his allowance and bought his first machine. This is my first machine I ever bought back in 1987. Wow. It's the only game that truly I will say is not for sale, <laughs> no matter anything, but no. yeah. How much work have you done to this machine over the years? Just keep it, it was actually a pretty reliable machine. Um, you know, light bulbs would go out and stuff like that, but we would fill, they won so much stuff. We kept filling the machine. I would probably say at least two, three times a week at the location it was at. So uh, no. I had it for several years and uh, you know, we had a lot of good product in there too. So, you know, it was it was fun back then. Being 14, starting a business, knowing that it would probably never end because I'd have to keep working forever. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, it, it was neat. From there, he kept building his business. I would go to auctions when I was in high school. I'd buy a Pac-Man for 50 bucks or a Tempest for $100, put them in a restaurant or a bar or a hotel and then well, everybody else is having fun in high school, going out after school. I'm running around counting my quarters and fixing games. And, uh, and then from there, went to college at A&M and put games like the Dixie Chicken and Dudley's Draw and all in Northgate and stuff like that. So, you know, that was fun as well. Today, he has 9,000 square feet of all sorts of games that are for sale or for rent. Feel like a kid again, buddy. So what's your favorite game? I have to say Robotron because I have it at my house. Or, if not, second best would be uh, Dragon's Lair. Okay, Dragon's Lair. Amazing technology back in the day. Yeah, it's like truly. you're watching a Saturday morning cartoon. It was very cool. And you controlled what it did. It was kind of like those uh, pick your way storybooks. Ex exactly. Reminiscing about how radical the 80s were is part of the joy of joysticks. Dinosaur like me remembers back when we used to play games, you know, and, and arcades and the whole social interacting aspect of it, you know. That's what people like. And exactly, that's, that's, going that's, out, yeah. seeing each other, you talking about to. what happened on A-Team, like yeah. what you've been up to, <laughs> yeah. And now it's just like on their headphones, like, yeah. hey, hey, turn four, okay. You yeah, to see if Mr. T had any more chains on for that yeah, one week to right? the next week, you know? Yeah, get out, <laughs> go see people. We've made it to the pinball room. We have, we have. So over here we have one of our more popular ones, which is Star Wars. Oh, look at and that. And they make these in different levels. This is the premium that has extra ramps to the Death Star that explodes. From Star Wars to Slimer, you'll jones over the magical, monstrous monopoly of games that will release your inner mini-me to come out and play. It really is groovy, and you know you'll be back, because even the games from the 70s are impressive, and I'm not talking Pong. A lot of people think that Pong is the first machine ever. Not? Not. Okay. That came out in 1974. 74. Over here, we have computer space. It came out in 1972. For 1972, this is way more impressive than just a ball going back and forth hitting balls. I'm gonna tell you, it's amazing. Gosh, to think we were still landing on the moon when this game came out, you know? That's it's crazy. Pretty impressive. It almost yeah. looks like it's from the moon. Yeah. You know, it's a really, really neat retro chic look now, you That's know? That's so cool. 
So if playing games sounds like the perfect place to spend some time, putting your hands on the controls at joysticks is well worth a couple quarters on the Texas bucket list. I need some quarters. You do need some quarters. <laughs> or dollars now. They're yeah, dollars. A dollar a game. Man, exactly. where's, yeah, where's the dollar <laughs> slot machine now? Does it take a credit card yet? Great shot, kid. That's one in a million. One in a million, baby.